okay, the Red Book, Chapter 21. Um, how did you guys, just a question, you have done it. When you wired the garbage disposal and the dishwasher, how did we do it? Multi-wire branch. Multi branch circuits, two circuits, split receptacles. Some of you have done split. All of you almost did split receptacles, right? Um, 20 amp circuits. This chapter will tell you why did you do it this way. The, way, the reason why you did it, guys, because we discussed it with me and told you that's the best practice. This chapter is to prove it. That's all, to prove it, and a couple of other things. Okay, a couple of things, guys, about um, uh, dishwasher, the circuit. Again, circuit for dishwasher and garbage disposal. Circuit for dishwasher, gar garbage disposal. Um, batch feed disposals and, um, and continuous feed. This is how um, the, dispo the disposal disposers or garbage disposals work, as in you're feeding the stuff on, on it. Just mechanical, the mechanical function of them. Um, the most important things, guys, is this one we brought a 20 amp circuit for it, right? And another one here, we brought another 20, 20 amp circuit for it. And what did we do? We brought a neutral that shared between both. And we call this is multi-wire branch circuit. Is that what we did? We're going to prove why did you why have we why did we do this? That's this chapter just to prove why did we do it. You guys know it already. Um, we're going to talk about connecting these equipments. And equipments, as you guys know, every equipment needs a disconnect. Every equipment, and the disconnects are meant because we got tired of losing fingers and hands in equipment. People put their hands in equipment and leave their fingers and and half of their hand there, right? Because of this, they start the smarter than Chad said, what if we have a disconnect where we can lock it, tag it, and nobody will ever lose their finger there, hopefully, you know, as they maintain these equipment. So that's the that's where it becomes the hardwire. You can hardwire the, these equipment or you can plug them in um, as a disconnect. Uh, overload protection for these equipment. We'll talk about what type of an overload protection that comes with these equipment. And moving into um, we have uh, requirements for providing means disconnect appliances very big deal please very big deal every time every time Brad from now on when the commercial project every time you have a machine always in your mind I need a cable to power it an over compression device to protect from short circuit and overload and I need a disconnect to completely physically mechanically isolate the equipment so an average Joe like uh, Eric for example when you pick on Eric comes and maintain this equipment and that average Joe guys does not have to be electrical. If that machine is a cooking machine in the down in, in the cafeteria, who, who do you think clean all these machines if it's hardwired? The people who have no, no idea what the what the electrical system is. So disconnect is a big deal. Grounding all appliances every time everything that has metallic frame, if it's not double insulated, everything in the electrical industry has to be ground, almost everything. There's Everything, almost everything, has to be grounded unless it's double insulated. Double insulated, designed by manufacturer to have the completely insulated, no metallic things that you can touch. So always think of insulating it. Um, yeah, a lot of temperature for this. This is FYI. The temperature for the dishwasher. Here's a. Here's what I want you guys to wake up if you snapped already. Um, the air for the disposal. <laughs> The amp for the disposal, 7.2 amps. Where did you get the amps for this disposal? The amps for this disposal is on either the nameplate or a horsepower. They usually give it to you as a horsepower. Horsepower motor, you find the amp. And then since it's treated, in this case, we I know we treated it as a motor. Disposals, a lot of people treat them because they made, especially, they treat them as an appliance. Anybody remember what the appliance is, the rule for appliances? If the, that was 22 dot, um, 20, article 422. Let's go quick to article 422 that talk about appliances. Here you go. Article 422.11e. 422.11e. If you guys go to 422.11e, if it's an appliance, if it's an appliance, and if it's uh, 13 amps, if it's uh, rated 13 amps or less, if it's 13 amps or less, it's a 20 amp, no question asked. If the appliance is 13 amps or less, are you there? I'm there. It says non-motor operator. You're right. Non-motor operated appliances. Um, I always, honestly, I always apply this rule for them okay. as an appliances. 
always apply this law. The other rule is to treat him. How do you treat him as a martyr? If it's a martyr, it's easy, guys. How do you treat a martyr? We all know how to do martyr. How do you do a martyr? If it was a, if you treat it as a martyr, 1.25, but it was slowed, and 2.5 over temptation device. Okay. These ones, honestly, I treat them personally. I treat them as appliances. I know the almost every. Yeah, I treat them as appliances. So if you go to this one, that will get you what's the amber now, up to based on this rule, 1 amp. If you want to treat it as a motor, Brad, good point. So what do you do? You take 1.25 times 7.2. Anybody can give me that one, please? Nine amps, nine amps. And from nine amps, you can take this one to two, uh, um, 310.16, that'll get you number 14. If it's an overcome friction device, guys, you take 2.5 because it's, uh, remember the 2.5? It's inverse by pressure times 7.2 equal. Anybody has a calculator? Let's see if we end up with the same. Huh? 18. 18 amps. What's your next overcome friction device? 20 amps. So we end up with 20 either way, but I have number 14. I know that's okay if it's a motor. I know that's okay if it's a motor. But because these guys are, that's why, because most of the people treat them as appliances, the inspector will always, if you see the 20 amp, always forces you to put, to put, uh, uh, to up this one to number 12. To up this to number 12. Get it easy. <coughs> so just get into the habit, garbage disposals, Garbage disposal, dishwasher, number 12, 20 amps. Either treat them as, as I said, as an appliances, or if you treat them as a motor, you're gonna end up with the same the same situation. Yes, yes, had this had this been a motor somewhere else, I can put a 20 amps on number 14. Residential, no. 20 amps, because because you guys are wiring a receptacle. That receptacle, yes, it's for the garbage disposal, but you can argue anybody can plug anything in there. Right? It's a receptacle, it's not hard wire. Okay, any question guys about that? So that's why we came up with 20 amps number 12. Everybody did 20 amps number 12 for the garbage disposal? 20 amps number 12. Now the garbage disposal guys need a disconnect. Two ways. If it's hardwired, you have to provide a, uh, a disconnect. A disconnect could be as easy as a snap switch. Or if it's a plugged in, your plug would work as a disconnect. Most of the time, you're going to see a lot of people guys use the plug as a disconnect. You plug as a disconnect. So, two ways for garbage disposal, plug as a disconnect, hardwire it. If you hardwire it, what do you need to do? Provide a snap switch. Why snap switch? Why not big fat boy like this? Because these are small, small amps. Up to, I think, two horsepower, you can use snap switch. Snap switch as a disconnect. Smaller, uh, uh, smaller horsepower, you can use snap switch as a disconnect. And, and a lot of people use them as a controller, too. Are they horsepower? Um, they don't have to be at, at uh, two horsepower or less, I believe, they don't have to be hard horsepower rated. They don't have to be. So what they did, guys, split, um, split receptacles. Let's just talk a little bit about split receptacle, if you guys forgot about split receptacle. For split receptacles, you connect the neutral in one side, right? And what do you do with the phase? The phase uh, or the hot one and hot two, Here's your split receptacle, and that will get you your multi-wire circuit. And then here's your 20 amp here, and here's your other 20 amp here. You tie them together by code, and you put 20 amp, and you share one neutral. That's the most common, not one neutral. And that will give me a split circuit receptacle, right? You split, there's a, a copper bar, a copper piece of copper here between these two. You cut it, and you split the receptacle, meaning this receptacle will be a 20 amp circuit, the bottom and the top, each one will be a 20 amp circuit, right? Can I bring, and this has to be from hot one, and this has to be, can this be from hot one again? It has to be from two. So it was the three phase, phase A, the second one must be from phase B. Otherwise you're defeating the purpose. Yeah, but if it's you have to tie the breakers. You have, as we said, the breakers have to be tied by code. So that's your multi outlet dishwasher. Here's a dishwasher, guys. A dishwasher is um, a small appliances. 
by the way, can I feed the dishwasher on a garbage disposal from the uh, two small appliances circuit? No. So everybody got that one. No, no, no. No small appliances circuit. Um, even though they are on appliances. Here's my dishwasher. My dishwasher is 9.2. They tell you to provide 20 amps for the dishwasher. Dishwasher is an appliance. Is an appliance. So if you apply the rule of appliances, I know it's not more, more appliances. If you apply the rule of appliances, yeah, this is 13 or less. What do you need? 20 amp. If it's a 20 amp, what conductor do you need? Number 12, AWG. And that's why commonly residential type dishwashers, commonly 20 amp, number 12. Where did you get this 9 amps? The, the 9 amps as uh, for the dishwasher is from the name plate, name plate of dishwasher, name plate of dishwasher. And as you guys know, the dishwasher has two things, right? The heating element to heat the water and the, the rotation is happening with what? A motor, you have a single phase motor. Okay, so that's what this chapter is just to prove what we have done or what we have told you before. Um, dishwasher, you can, most dishwasher, correct me uh, DJ if I'm wrong, most dishwasher are plugged in. Why do they plug them in? They don't want to provide a disconnect for it. Any time of disconnect for it. So they, what they do is they plug them in. Um, so you can either provide a disconnect, a switch disconnect box for it. Don't do that ever for residential, for residential. Or you can provide a plugged in, a cord and a plug which is approved by the code as a disconnect means so people can why disconnect means you unplug the equipment then you start you start maintaining it my question for you guys for the garbage disposal back to the garbage how do you control the garbage disposal switch that switch that disconnect switch the act also that disconnect switch it could act also as a controller so it's a controller and disconnect number one some of them guys are if you read through book, there's some of them that pressure control, where you can push the stuff in it and it activates pressure control. You push the, uh, the, the food into the garbage disposal, by pushing it down, it activates the motor. By pushing it down. Yeah. So you don't have to put your finger, though, down there and leave it. Did you guys see the commercial that a husband is, is fixing the garbage disposal and, um, and his hand is right in there and his wife is trying to turn the... <laughs> the electricity and a little bit about taking chances take your chances three four uh, snap switches and she's trying to pick which one <laughs> <laughs> that's for the casino right you're out there, you're yeah i think it's odd odds are, it's better here i thought gosh knowing what the garbage disposal can do to you oh a couple of fingers will be down there oh <laughs> i thought that was cool okay plug it in that's the only reason why and um that we have the, the a plug in now all these have motors guys um garbage disposal i don't know how many of you guys i made money out of this little thing integral thermal overload protection how many of you guys electricians people will call you and they say oh my garbage disposal is not working you go charge them 96 dollars and you push that red button in because it's overloaded why especially after thanksgiving because they put the bones in it they think that garbage disposal is going to cut everything man or they drop the a spoon down there that will overload it if you don't have the overload what happened smoke start coming out of it so your option either smoke or you trip that little thing so garbage disposal have a little thermal protection how about how about the dishwasher dishwasher guys is complete appliances controlled by manufacturer they have the overload inside it everything is controlled and how do we control the dishwasher as we all know it's an appliances all the control is built in all what we have to provide for these guys is what a feeder to feed it an over temperature device to protect it and a disconnect as you guys start going a lot in commercial industrial you're going to realize most of the machines that we use in the industry machines to make things um, are two things that we provide for these machines really three things we provide always a cable to feed it we provide a disconnect to disconnect it by code and over temperature device to protect it the control part of these machines, you're going to find a lot of them are provided by the manufacturer of the machine. A lot of them. As you go to the control. Um, so this is how the overload works. So it, it, as you know, you drop the, if you drop 
that ball right here jams it when it jam motors are stupid sorry to say dj but they're stupid if you jam them it's not like they say it's like like males exactly they were not stupid but it's like males you know if you yell at me and instead of saying you know, be polite i yell at you and that seems like motors instead of saying okay i'm jammed now i need to stop they start pulling more and more and more current more and more current what's going to happen to the windings they start smell first and then a little smoke comes out of it if you let it go for a while fire comes out of it and then the circuit breaker will wake up then the circuit breaker will wake up okay so here's one way of hot wiring it guys so this piece of equipment here acts as what a disconnect and at the same time as a controller can i have a plug in here with it no problem bring it on so this will be you can use this as a disconnect or you can use this as a disconnect but but you're not going to plug and unplug the garbage disposal to start it right you usually will start it with a disconnect so that's why you find a lot of garbage disposal even though they are plugged in there's also a switch at the top that switch is not there to act as a, as a disconnect though it could it's there to act as a controller start and stop the motor and let's say some of them are pressure activated where you push this little you push down on this little piece and it activates it Act so then do you need the switch if this is a plug-in no you don't, this, you don't need to have a switch on this? If, it's, if this is a plug-in, oh, plug in, oh. if this is a plug-in, okay. sure, if it's a plug-in, and this is pressure activated, then that switch is redundant. Oh, right, you right. can if you want to, it's redundant. It's redundant. Okay, connection. I just talked about some inspectors. I don't know if you encounter them. I encounter some of those guys, they like the inspectors like a plug-in as a disconnect. They don't like the switch as a disconnect. And, um, you know, they're way easier to work or dishwasher when it's out and not plugged in. You know, so that plug it instead of tube or something. Yeah, plug it and it's plug it in, you can, you can, you know, move it out and, and maintain it. So inspectors like the cord and plug, cord, connected appliances versus what hardwired. Always get into the habit if you do residential. Anybody disagree with me? Always get into the habit of what? Plug it into a, a, a plug. Does the, does the receptacle in the kitchen under the countertop dedicated for the garbage disposal and or the dishwasher need to be GFCI? No. Or GFCI protected? Is it okay if I put in a GFCI? Yeah. Does it have to be? No. I've never seen people putting it on the GFCI. Why? Maybe it's because the GFCI, uh, I guess if you the GFCI, you talk about what, 12 dollars now versus a receptacle, candle sure. resistant, it's going to be, what, let's see, 33 cents, man. Not for a candle resistant. Candle resistance, a buck 50. 13. No, a buck 50. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, <really> okay two. <laughs> <laughs> you are expensive. <laughs> so it's, uh, by the way, by the way, Here's you're gonna love it, DJ. The code 111, code 111. If the receptacle is dedicated for equipment, exactly like garbage disposal, excluded from tab or resistant 111. Oh. If it's which makes sense. If a receptacle is dedicated for equipment, like garbage disposal, dishwasher, uh, it's on, in the cupboard, closed. So who's uh, the kids are not gonna go unplug the machine and put the uh, things on it, right? This is excluded from tamper resistance. And also receptacles, I believe, if I remember right, five and a half or higher, or higher than five and a half. So if you have a receptacle in the house, that silicone plasma TV right here, how would a child climb in there and stick a, a paper clip to it? You know, it's excluded. So, so, I, I'm back to what? <laughs> 53 cents, buddy. Yeah, but that goes on there. <laughs> <laughs> Until what, July 1st? Yeah, you <laughs> fail inspection based on the 2008 you're absolutely right <laughs> that's all what i have guys about this chapter any questions very easy straightforward nothing no gimmicks to it um i don't know if i mentioned guys all of them have to be grounded all equipment have to be grounded as we all know equipment has to be grounded So the garbage disposal, the dishwasher, has to be grounded. 
That goes without discussion. All equipment, close ink, has to be grounded. All right, let me go to, before I lose your momentum, to another 12 slides, not a whole lot, 12 slides. Admit the installation, supplement the temperature device, disconnect. If you guys go to a chapter 22, chapter 22 talk about this special piece of equipment, special piece of equipment, uh, which is heat, light, and vent at the same time. We talked about this one, I remember one time, right? Anybody ever install them? Install this piece of equipment? And let's go directly to that piece of equipment. Come on, buddy. There you go. Anybody ever install this piece? This is what we're talking about, guys. You installed it? No? Yeah. Rough the Okay, here's the piece of equipment that heat, cool, will give. I'm going to directly go to this. This is one piece of equipment, as you can see, guys. It's completely enclosed, one piece of equipment. Okay? So this piece of equipment, what it does, it has a fan and a heat and two lamps. Two lamps. Here's this two lamps. One is a night lamp. This one will be night. Night lamp. What's lamp? Sorry. Night lamp. If you have children, you appreciate that. And this will be your your light. Normal light. This will be obviously your heat to heat the place. And this will be the fan. This is a fan. Fan. Fan can do two functions, guys. The fan can dual function. Can exhaust all the bad smells outside. So it can exhaust without getting too many details. So exhaust. The other function is also, um, what's the word? Heat. heat. Um, not the spread heat. Uh, move heat. Move heat. I like the word move. Move heat. So they have a dual function fan. That's smart. Don't you think that's smart? I like smart people when they think. They have in one piece of equipment, I can heat the bathroom, commonly used in bathrooms, commonly used in, in um, motels and hotels, bathrooms. I've seen them. Anybody ever, you guys you see them somewhere else, different places, other than uh, motels and hotels? I installed them in motels and hotels. But it, they could be used in anywhere. Anywhere, guys. If you don't have a central heat in your house, I guess. Um, this would be a good place to use to, in, in, in a bathroom, to heat the bathroom. I got one. You? Yeah. Okay. In a, do you have central heat? Yeah. So it's supplemental heat? Yeah. Supplemental heat. The bathroom is cold, it's supplemental heat. Okay. What they do, guys, then, you can turn the light, you can turn the light on, or you can turn the li night light on, or you can turn the fan on, or you can turn the heat on. The way they work, night light, perfect, you know, just light on. The two lights piece easy to understand. Um, the heater easy to understand. You put the heater on. Now, if you put the heater and the fan at the same time, the damper will close, and the air instead of being exhausted out by design, it's blown down by design of the fan, the gear. So, if you put the fan and the heater at the same time, the damper closes, so you are no longer exhausting, and the, all the heat in that fixture will be pushed down to heat the, the space. The, the minute that you turn the heater off and you keep the fan on, what happens? It, the amber will open and start going, moving the air out, exhausting the air. So it's a multifunction. A piece, a piece of equipment like this, yes, definitely you need what do you need? At least 20 amp circuits. You can't feed it from any other circuits. That's a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Dedicated 20 amp circuit. Look, at, let's look how many conductors you need. You need a common neutral for all of them and a switched hot for each one of the pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, plus the ground. Five conductor plus the ground. How do you get five conductor plus the ground? That they are probably a good application for a flexible, flexible metallic conduit. And you pull flex metal conduit with a box, metallic box here, tie it to the equipment, a good application. Pull, pull, uh, how many conductors do I need? One, two, three, four, five. And a ground, that will be six conductors. Six or yes, sir. You're right in the belt. Six, <laughs> six conductors. Six conductors. You can pull six conductors. Now, another option that you can do, guys, is you can, uh, you can, another option to do this is you can take these two. That will give me um, 12. That will give me 12, um, 12 three. You can get 12 three, three conductors, one, two, three. 
uh, number 12, uh, three, three conductors, and then grab another neutral with another 12, three, right? You have to have another neutral. So in this case, you will have plus ground. That will be 12, three, and another 12, three. So two neutral, you have to have two neutrals. So two 12, threes should be okay. Back to the equipment. Any question guys about this piece of equipment? Heat pool, everything in all one. In so that's here. Um, let's go back to, okay, so that's the fixture that we were talking about. And we use it, as they say, um, we're going to talk about the bathroom, that fixture they're going to talk about. There's also um, hydro massage top. How do you wire hydro massage top? Anybody has a hydro massage top? No? You guys are not rich? Yeah. Camille has one. And, and an attic fan. So these are the three things in this tiny little chapter. Um, we talk about the fan, understand exhaust fan mix, and EC connections, um, humidity problems. We'll talk about this one, hydro massage top. Okay, here's the, I'm not gonna, I reviewed this fixture guys with you, the heat pool light fixture. Here's the four switches for this fixture, right? We review how to wire it, and we said we can wire it with what? Two options, we said either six conductors, six conductors, conductors, or um, two cables, 12, three, and another 12, three. Two options of wiring this piece of equipment, we know it. Um, on, off the damper, we talked about how that works, right? The damper, closing the dampers, got that one. Um, vent cool, raceways, and them cable. Here they, they say there might be a violation it might using NM cable might be about it. might. He didn't say even would. It says might. Some inspector might not like you to send two cables to one piece of equipment. Though, what's the difference between paralleling when we parallel? Don't we, if we parallel, but not at that level though, don't we send two cables to one equipment at a higher level? So, some, some, anybody ever got into the ones who wire? Mr. Boo, do you get, get into any problem? Never, never wire them. That that piece. To number twelve. I don't know. Remember, the code is interpreted by many inspectors, so some people might not like the idea that you're sending two cables to two cables to one piece of code. Huh? The inspector is going to say which part probably not going to apply. Well, say which part is the part. Because. Okay, that, so that's the exhaust fan. The humidistat guys, in the attic, they have this fan that circulates the air in the attic to keep your house cool in the winter, right? And warm in the summer. Cool, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Do they use it at night for humidity? Um, so the humidistat, you can control it with a humidistat switch on it. Um, the humidity stats start the exhaust fan when the relative humidity reached a certain level, 50, 60, is that 60 bad, 60 uh, relative humidity kicks in. Um, automatic maintenance of the level is 50 at relative heat, at 50% relative, relative humidity in your attic. So that's a control part of it. Um, in the book, guys, there's a few, so it's li literally, it's a fan in an attic. Now, two things, if it's a fan and attic, what do I need for it? I need a circuit, 20 amp circuit feed it, or 15, depending on how small. Or if you don't know, always 20 amp circuit is a great a great idea. Number 12 conductor, It's a, if it's a fan, and you need a, you need some type of a control for it, guys. One control is on-off switch. My on-off switch is a control. Um, you have a varial speed, you can put a speed, and there's a couple of pictures of them, a speed, you can have a timer, Time it, you can have hum humidity control, you can have high temperature, you set it if the temperature in your attic uh, hits the 95, 95 degree Fahrenheit, not so fit yet. It kicks in, lower it down, um, or a combination of all, a combination of all of these. We don't get involved in the control part of it, guys. Well, sometimes for residential, when somebody has a fan, the first thing you need to ask them is what type of control do you guys want to buy with it? You have just switched there on. Most of the time, you're going to have some type of a temperature control. A lot of it, some of them put it on a temperature control. If the temperature reaches, say, 100 or 95, it kicks in. 
um, or if the humidity reaches uh, 60, kicks in and bring it down to 50 or so. So that's type of the control. I want to bring, use this opportunity, guys, to tell you a little bit about, me, as we always say, about mechanical equipment. If you have any mechanical equipment, any mechanical, this is my mechanical equipment. Any mechanical equipment that you have, us, we always provide them with an over convection device and a cable. That's minimum. Over convection device and a cable. Always. That's always what we, at least minimum, we provide them. The following would be optional for us. Number one, a disconnect. Some equipment come with a disconnect with it right away. Another optional thing is a controller. Equipment controller. Some equipment come with a controller right in, right? That would be my controller. Controller, that would be my disconnect. So minimum, minimum for mechanical equipment, commercial industrial, minimum will provide a feeder and overcompetition device. Minimum. Then when you go meet with the mechanical engineer, you're going to tell them, okay, are you guys providing a disconnect for this piece of equipment or do I need to provide disconnect? Are you guys providing the control system for this piece of equipment or are we? Most of the time, guys, major equipment, the mechanical contractors, the equipment has its own disconnect on it as well as, uh, as uh, the control. Most of the time. But it's, this is a, this area, a gray area here, where you have to interface between electrical and mechanical equipment, air handling unit and my feeder. That's the area that you need to discuss with whom? Discuss with mechanical engineers. Always discuss with mechanical engineers when it comes to commercial industry. Residential, not a big deal. You're going to ask the homeowner, what do you guys want the temperature on it? You put that temperature line. You have a, a few pictures of line temperature we're going to show you here. Okay, hydro massage top, guys. Um, read all this, or you can read it summarize, it summarize right in here. You fill the top, you use it, and when you're done, you drain it. That's what what's supposed to do. Um, but filling it, using it, and draining it, have recirculating piping. You have to, you have to have every time you, you recirculate things. What do you need? A pump, or you can ask your wife or your significant other to recirculate the water while you sit there um, by hand. So you need a pump. Pump. Most of the time, it's not. It's an electrically powered pump, not mechanically powered pump. You can't buy a mechanically powered pump. I can ask uh, uh, um, my friend been here to just keep moving things with his hand that's mechanically powered pump right or you can diesel engine burn diesel engine have a pump you, cities use them all the time guys um when they want to pump water from control these controlled ponds that they use to control the flow of water in the cities they have mechanical pumps that they can they burn diesel to pump the water from point a to point b not electrical they're very powerful these pumps are uh are Electrical, electrically powered pumps. I like the word electrically powered pumps and electrically controlled. A couple of things, guys, you need to know about this. If you have your pump, your hydro massage tub, all that you need to provide is a dedicated a 20 amp circuit with a hot and a neutral. And either you provide, this is a G, FCI, either you provide the GFCI directly circuit breaker to it, or or you put, or you feed a receptacle. A lot of them, I don't know if you guys wired it, so either or here. Or it's a plug plug in right in here. You have a receptacle and you the equipment is plugged into this GFCI. But GFCI has to be guys uh GFCI have to be to have you have to have access to the GFCI. If this is under the cover, anybody wired that you wired the DJ? What did they put? They put right here a trip. GFCI trip. Anybody ever wired these? It looks like a GF. It's a face of a GFCI. Dead front. Dead front. G the face of a GFCI. There's no receptacle in it. Just the push button for the GFCI. So you have a, a GF the mechanism for the GFCI. No receptacle. Just the push button in it. And then the receptacle itself would be sitting, uh, a receptacle would be sitting right under the uh, hydro massage tub. So the reason why they do it this way, because you need to have access to the GFCI to reset it. If you put the GFCI right in here, and now if you, if you know what I'm talking about, these will be enclosed. So how do you get access to it? Because it's part, it becomes part of the whole um, 
high level massage top deal. So long story short, they put a GFCI trip, a tiny little device, the, the mechanism of the tripping separated from the receptacle. Then you can put any receptacle here as long as you feed it from G this GFCI trip. Or if you don't like this, what's your other option? You have to put it in GFCI. Bonding. Bonding. Huh? Yeah, that's part of a control over the top, right? But for us, the one that we involved in is at 1 a.m., a number 12 conductor to a GFCI, either GFCI receptacle or GFCI trip into it. And the other thing is they do in hydro massage stuff, they bond all the electrical mechanical equipment. You bond them with number eight. Um, you bond them. So all the electrical, the, the motor, you bond it to the pipe. You don't have to take it all the way back to the panel like I used to think. You take it, you don't have to take a number six or number eight all the way back to the panel. Just bond them together. All the pipe, if it's electrically pipe, now a lot of them are not, they're non-conductive pipe. It's, if it's a conductive pod, you bond it to the motor. That's all that you have to do. Any question, that's it. So that's basically, and uh, three foot, the manufacturer provides three foot, you know, with it plug in. Um, if you want to have it hardwired, no problem. You have to have a disconnect, and the disconnect, you have to have access to the disconnect. You can't hardwire. Most of these, at least the, the one that I saw, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, they're plugged in with a receptacle, any receptacle, and the GFCI trip will be right in the wall next to it. So if it trips, you push the button, the receptacle here is controlled by, by the uh, GFCI trip. Any question, guys? Any question about the hydro massage stuff? Let's go to 680.71. For the heck of it, can you guys go there? 680. Hundred eighty dot twenty one. Anybody's there? Twenty two dot twenty one. Uh, permanently installed. No, I thought seventy one. Where am I saying what? Chad. Two hundred eighty dot seventy one. Seventy one. Protection. Hydro massage tops and their associated shall be on an individual branch circuit. So can I feed it from anything else? No. And protected by a readily accessible, readily accessible ground fold interrupter. Readily accessible. So it has to be right there. And 120 amp single phase receptacle, not exceeding 30 amps and located within six feet, midget horizontally of the inside wall of the hydro massage top shall be protected by a, a ground fold circuit interrupter. Ground full circuit interrupter. So that will give you that trip, 20 amp circuit trip, and a plug for disconnect. Any question you have about this? How to massage stuff? That's all what you need to do for that boy. So with this is what we're talking about, guys. So what you need to do, you need um, either GFCI circuit breaker, and if it's power power panel here, um, you need to. You need to have a disconnect. In the case of it's hardwired, guys, you need to have some type of a disconnect unless it's plugged in. Some type, yes, sir. What's most common? Hardwired? I, the one that I've seen is plugged in. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys have any, anybody wired other than hardwired? Plugged in. Because if you are hardwired, you need to put a disconnect that looks ugly in a residential. I mean, they used to be. Like that. People have for hot tubs all right along. Yeah. Huh? For hot tubs outside, they have a disconnect. Uh, you have to have a disconnect outside. How would you have the plugged in though? You can't, yeah, you can't have plugged in. Why not? Oh, yeah, the, the size. Yeah, how are you going to find a 30 amp receptacle then? 20 amp, yeah, you have well, to have a disconnect. It's America, so you can have anything. No, no, I mean, you, you have to have a disconnect. Is it 240 that they use outside? If it's 240, then that's big spiel. These are guys are 120, 20 amp. If your hydro massage stuff is 240, then you have to have a disconnect. Any question, guys, about the hydro massage tub? Before I'll let you. Um, okay. 
when let me just look show you a couple of pictures here and I'll let you guys go for a quick break and then we'll um we'll finish come on boy here you go we talked about these okay here's what I want to talk about is um okay controller okay here's um Here's, do you guys have this in your book? This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight ways of controlling uh, exhaust fan. Exhaust fan from a snap switch into speed control, into heat control, into humidity stat, into high temperature, into a combination of all. So pick and choose. Most of the time, guys, these equipments, if you haven't wired it, um, most of the time, uh, Ryan, my friend, most of the time, this is just a, one piece of equipment here. So you bring it one piece of equipment. See, you see what I mean? This is all in one. So this is all in one here. This is all in one piece, all in one, all in one. So what does that mean? Meaning, Spencer, you bring your 20 amp circuit to a box like this, where you have the control, right? You land the control on the hot or the neutral, depending what type of control you do. And then from here, from the switch, it goes all the way to the panel. So these are devices. So I bring my circuit to the device, out of the device to the fan. So to the device, out of the device to the fan. To the device, out of the device to the fan. If your fan are a fraction horsepower or a smaller horsepower, you don't need guys a disconnect by code for it. The fans I use there, you do not need a disconnect for them by code. If it's fraction horsepower, you can depend on the circuit breaker to be your disconnect. Circuit breaker to be your disconnect. If they're if they're uh, bigger and I, I think it's fraction of horsepower, less than a horsepower, you do not need a disconnect for that. Okay, so these are your control methods for them. The the last thing I want to show you guys is this one. If you look at this, this is how um, an inline thermostat. Um, line voltage humidity stack would work. Line voltage humidity stack would work. So outlet box, you look at how we brought, can you guys see how we brought the power into it? We have a, a line voltage humidity stack sitting somewhere, wired. So if it, if the, uh, the humidity reaches a certain level preset, it will send, it close this contact, this contact and this contact, the motor will run. When the humidity goes below a lower level, it, it, it will open this contact, and then that motor will stop. This is called line. Anybody can tell me why this is a line humidity stat? What does a line mean? Line humidity stat? Line humidity stat, you, 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 you dump 120 on it. So look at that. You think it's 120 here? 120 here, everything. Is there any transformer that's taking the voltage from 120 to a different voltage? Nothing. Look at the opposite here. Here's another human stat, or it could be a temperature, it could be anything, guys. Where you brought, look what they did. They brought the power here to a transformer. I'm just going to track the power. Can you guys see the power? Went to a transformer and right in here for the interruption and back. So to, to, and this will be a 24 volt, 24 volt to the humidity stat. So the, here's my humidity stat sitting somewhere remotely. When it kicks in, when it closes, when it closes, guys, it, and look at that. When it closes, it energizes this contact. When this contact is energized, what's happened to, what happened to the, the motor? And of course, this will be closed. What happened to the motor if, they, if it's energized? The motor will run, and then it keeps running until the humidity reaches a certain level, where it opens, because the humidity reaches a, a preset level. When it opens, it de-energizes the relay, and now the relay opens this tiny little contact, and my motor stops working. If you are wiring this in the field as a project manager, guys, if you're wiring it, this requires you to have this one is a disconnect. Uh, when they have a disconnect with that, we have a disconnect switch within sight and running over competition device. This, for these are four major ones. You have three pieces of equipment to worry about. One is a disconnect overload piece. 
another one as a relay, and a third one as humility set. So you have three pieces of equipment to wire, plus the motor, plus, of course, the pan. So Brad, here's what you're doing. You're bringing the power tool conductors to a box that has a disconnect. We'll call the then the disconnect here. There's an overload in it. And from this box, we take a two wires, two wires directly to the motor, and also three wires going to a relay. And this is how they're landing. One, two, three. Out of that relay, two more wires, low voltage. Now we are in the 24 volt here. The 24 volt here is 120 or 240. Now two wires, small wires, small wires, low voltage wires, to a thermostat, a humidistat that could be sitting. Everything could be here. The motor could be there, and the humidistat could be right in the other corner. And all these systems are tied together through wires. This will be your uh, class, this one class two circuit. We call it this class two circuit in NEC for a book at 725. Article 725 talks about this. It just tells you you can't put them in the same conduit, generally speaking, as you can put the power. Any question guys about the controller? When it comes to the controller, it starts getting a little bit uh, interesting. So I have one, two, three, four, five pieces of equipment in could be five different locations, five different locations tied together with a power cable and a low voltage cable. With this, you guys have any question? So we have a five minutes break. Load calculations or project schedule or cut sheets in our specs are all in that blank space. Uh, home yeah. since the boom is set to and uh, you gotta have this garage. That's why you go to Microsoft Project and you click on the big help button. Yeah. And then everything that you can figure out.
That's for sure. Right? Yeah, Simply make you go gray. <laughs> Not for long. Not for long. Yeah, That's why they created the, uh, all these dyes. The color. <laughs> oh, yeah. You shave it off. Uh, I don't like shaving it off. But in a week or so, Chad will come as a blondie man. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> <That would> be <laughs> be. <laughs> the one that you're giving us is doesn't have the math in it. We got to make it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we got to make it, dude. It's all <laughs> same thing. It don't you don't get to plug our numbers in the one that's working. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> do it. I like that dude. <laughs> Okay, are you guys all here? Who is whom are we missing here? Oh, missing a few? Hey, do you have time to get water? Or? Yeah, go get water. Oh, go water. We'll wait for you. It's only one chapter left, so we have. in the eyes of the beholder but and we have a speaker down there now how would you do it okay you guys are back whom are we missing Ryan 
Is he still smoking? Oh, okay. DJ. DJ, DJ. Are you? I'll keep you busy. Okay. Let's uh do me a favor guys. Do me a favor. Two things. When we talk when we talk about heat cooling, heating and cooling system residential. When we talk about heating and cooling system, we're still rolling here. Oh, we didn't even stop it. Hmm. Oh. That's all right. When we talk about heating cooling system residential, my friends, I want you to write next to each one of these the following. AC article, anybody remember what article is AC for? Or 30. 30 is the motors. Mm -hmm. You're very close. 440. 440 AC equipment. Heat. Any uh, any idea where the heat would be for? 424, 424. So these are the two articles that cover heat and cooling system. Heat and cooling system. Just FYI. And uh, especially this article that we'll be doing a lot of it as we go to air handling unit and chill is later on in the commercial. With this, what we need to, for this chapter, guys, we need uh, talk about embedded, I don't know if any of our ever wired or seen embedded resistance heat cable. That's one heating system. You embed the you in, embedded resistor resistor heat cables in the in the walls or the ceiling or the floor, and you heat the floor, ceiling, or walls. If any, uh, the other one is the furnace. You guys are very familiar with the furnace, right? In Minnesota, it's very common in the furnace. Uh, electric baseboard heaters, um, electric baseboard heaters, and electric furnace or electric furnace. Anybody ever seen an electric furnace? Electric powered furnace, not electric controlled furnace, meaning you burn electricity to get the heat. Electric powered furnace. Uh, the heat pump as the gas furnace. That, that works with a gas furnace. That's what we have the gas furnace with the heat pump. So these are what we're going to be talking about, guys. A few of these. Um, Voltage variation in heat is also a big deal, especially in commercial, not in really in residential. So a couple of things. Uh, HVAC equipment, guys. HVAC equipment will, will review heat cooling system in Article 4, 4 zero, right? And um, this one is really, I want you guys to highlight it. HVAC equipment. If you have an HVAC equipment, you need a 20 amp dedicated receptacle to feed 20 amp receptacle. Doesn't have to be dedicated for the HVAC equipment to maintain it. The reason residential wise, it's not a big deal because when you remember when you guys put your uh, AC units right next to them, there was an outside receptacle by code. You have to have an outside receptacle in the front and the back. So most of the time, because the, the air conditioning is in the back, you're going to find a receptacle within 25 feet anyway. This has to be within 25 feet of the equipment. And energy rating terminology, FYI only, when it comes to the HVAC equipment. Energy terminology when it comes to the HVAC equipment. Um, baseboard heaters in Minnesota, guys, they're supplemental. So we don't, most of the people don't use baseboard heaters unless you supplement, right? We use forced air um, as a heat air. You supplement it 
either as a baseboard, wall mounted, or floor mounted units. Um, radiant heat. Radiant heat. I don't know how many of you have seen embedded in the ceiling or a drywall. Anybody ever seen uh, installed radiant heat? They're really cool. They wire them in the walls or the floor and they heat the floor for you. They heat the floor. Embedded. Does it? Yeah, it's really cool stuff. I have, I have not wired them. And the furnace here is your central heat or central. The furnace, the electric furnace is just you power it with electric and you get your, um, your power out of that. A couple of things. Let me just explain a couple of things about heat, especially heat, if you have heat. If you have heat, the following things you need to understand. A heater, number one, guys, you need an overturned protection device. You need a cable. For heat, any type of heat, the cable is size 1.25 times I. Brad, why 1.25 times I? Continuous load. I know you don't want you to uh, Overcome friction device is always size 1.25 times I. Anybody knows why 1.25 for the overcome friction device yeah. times I? Because if it's continuous load, you cannot take more than what out of a, a reserve, out of the circuit breaker? 80%. So you have to size, oversize the circuit breaker to accommodate for the 80% cut. So we size any type of heat, guys. You're going to size it basically overcome friction device. And um, a 1.25 over temperature device, as well as a cable. This is a couple of things I think. Uh, <coughs> this is a couple of things, guys, about the advantage of electric heat over gas heat. You can argue this. Um, I think gas heat in Minnesota is cheaper, no? That's why we use it a lot. Uh, but the advantage of electric heat uh, over gas heat, meaning burning electricity to get heat, not just circulating it. We always use electri electricity to circulate heat, guys, with, with fans and blowers. But burning it to get the heat, we don't use it all the time. We use gas to burn. There is a couple of things, just FYI, if anybody want to use them. Uh, quiet, clean, safe operation. I agree with that one. There is no gas explosions. There is no gas explosions if your gas, if your heat, heating system is not uh, gas. Does not depend on electric fuel, uh, fuels and uh, fuel tanks. Um, this is if you live outside the cities and use electric heat. If you, you don't have gas heat in outside the cities or major cities, so you have to have your tank. So now, if you have electricity, you don't depend on the tank outside city for your heat and cool. And um, no chimney. But then how is Santa's going to come to your house, though, if you don't have a chimney? That's an issue, right? Mm -hmm. You see this is a problem, Chanel, my That's friend? That's why he hasn't shown up for a while. I don't think he will show up this year for you. <laughs> well, because you don't have a chimney, it's because you were bad. <laughs> I didn't say that, huh? You were not red today, you looked like Santa. <laughs> I'll bring you two grades though, for, for Christmas. <laughs> and this, I like this one, I guess. Uh, for a while. There is always carbon monoxide, and carbon monoxide is a big issue with, with furnaces. If you don't have, um, if you don't have uh, a gas to burn, you're burning electricity. Your oxygen is not going to be consumed, and you don't going to end up, first, you're not using oxygen because you're not burning gas. Number two, as much oxygen. And number two, you don't, you don't have uh, carbon monoxide CO in your, in your system. <laughs> so that's a big deal. But it's expensive. It's expensive. So that's kind of advantages of electric heat, furnace, or, or any type. Here's what we're talking about, guys, and I want you to, this is special type of heat. Two things I want you to do. Number one, I want you to pay attention now. Number one, it's an equipment. So what does an equipment need, Spencer? Need a disconnect. This is your disconnect. And also equipment need an overcome friction device. How do you size overcome friction device? 1.25 times full load current and if it's not a standard where you go you go out and then also you need a feeder here's my feeder how do you size your feeder 1.25 times full load current and after that where do you go 310.16 and we know how to use 310.16 based on 100 amp or less than 100 amp that's all what you need to do up to this point straightforward right it's continuous load 125, always. Continuous load 125. 
Um, this boy is actually a huge. I just want to. I uh, can't read it here. What's the amp on that? The amp on that one is. Look at that. Seventy-nine amps. Seventy. What is it? Name that. Uh, answers. I don't have it on that one. Okay. Seventy. Yeah. This one, guys, is seventy. Seventy-nine amps. Multiply this by one point two five. That will get you. What's the conductor that they're sizing for this door? They're sizing uh, ninety. Say ninety-nine amps. Ninety-nine amps. And then they have number. What's number? Three. Yeah. You have two conductor. You have two conductors. Number three. And what's the over temperature device based on this? 100 amps. So you have 100 amps on two conductors number three. This is big. I mean, that's a 100 amp panel just for the heat. Versus if it was a gas, you bring it by code, you have to bring a 20 amp, a 15 amp dedicated circuit for the gas, for the blower, just for the blower and the control. Okay, so the, everybody knows how to size a furnace, an electric furnace. Take the amps of the furnace, multiply by 1.25, size over temperature device, and the conductor. What, what the heck is this? This is your thermostat. This is class, class two circuit. Two conductors, two conductors, number, probably number 16 or 18. Thermostat. You have this one, number 16 or 18, two conductors, number 16 or 18, bringing the thermostat just to control to control the heat, just to control the heat. And there's no cold air here. There's no cold air interface. Any question guys about the electric, electrically powered, electrically powered um, furnaces? Anybody ever seen them in, the, in Minnesota? Electrically powered? Yeah. Uh, yep, heating elements. They have a heating elements here. All what they do is heating elements. It's like absolutely like your toaster. They go on And they blow the air right through these he the heated uh, coils. How much per the in Minnesota? What do we what do we pay? Don't we pay nine cents per kilowatt? And even burning it all winter in Minnesota. That's why gas is more more uh, affordable. Any question guys about this here? How to size it? Where do you use it? Disconnect, conductors, control. How about the control on my end? My friend, do I need a control? Do I need to worry about the control here? It's self-controlled. All I have to do is provide the input from thermostat. That's all. Self-controlled. Self-controlled. Okay, here's the calculation that we did. Voltage variation. In residential, it's not a big deal, guys. Applied voltage squared equal rated voltage squared. The, remember, this is, if you guys want to write next to this one. Okay, here's my voltage. And um, every time, and we, we wrote this one, here's the voltage. For voltage, every time voltage doubles, double, power goes four times. Every time the voltage double, based on this, the power goes, four, means four more times power. Every time the voltage halved, is that a word? Half, you half it, um, the power is cut by one fourth. That's what they say, the, the, they call it the correction factor. For resistive loads, guys, power is a big deal. Power is a big deal because uh, resistors are smart. Unlike motors, resistors are very smart. Unlike most of induction motors, they're not smart. Resistors, if you give them that amount of power, uh, that amount of voltage, they give you that amount of power. Now, you lower the voltage down, they lower the power by one-fourth every time you cut it by half. Motors, they don't. If you give them that amount of voltage, induction motor, they give you that amount of, po of, of, of power. If you give them that amount of voltage, they still want you to give you that, that amount of power. In the process, they pull more current, 
and they kill themselves. They're really faithful soldiers for you. They want to give you the same amount all the time, but they die in the process. Unless you have an overload to protect them. So that's my correction factor, buddies. Uh, baseboard heaters. Uh, installation of baseboard heater guys becomes an issue because these are three foot, six foot, eight foot, and, and if you put a baseboard heater along here, guys, then how in residential, how are you gonna meet how are you gonna meet the six foot slash twelve? This becomes baseboard heater becomes an issue with six feet by twelve feet rule. You guys remember the six by six by twelve? Six from every opening, twelve in between. What happened if this heater was eight foot heater? Okay, eight foot teacher, and, and there's an opening, there's a door right here. Where are you going to put your receptacle? And there's the door comes right next to. So, how are you going to eight foot here and here? What's here? Not here. There you go. Here's my door. And an eight foot now to meet the code, you need a receptacle within six feet. So, what do you need to do? You need to go here and put your receptacle at the top here. Can you put your receptacle right above the heater? No, why? Because the dangle, the cord will be dangling right above the heater. I guess when you put a cord, insulation of the cord above the heater, you burn it and you smoke it and you create fire. All right, so what do we do? Either you have a, well in, in a case like this, guys, you can buy a ther you can buy a heater with actually a receptacle built in it for this particular application to meet the code. But then, the receptacle has to be powered from one circuit, circuit number one, and the heater will be powered from circuit number two. You don't power them from the same circuit. Does that make sense? Or, if you don't like that, you have a blank here, no heating here, and you put your receptacle at the top. That's an option. But the, the idea, guys, here's what the built in. This is just to meet the 6 by 12 rule, or the 2 feet rule. If you have a two feet rule, a wall two foot, and you just want to put a two foot base heater in that corner, you have to have a built in receptacle in it, and you can buy it. All right, here's what they don't want you to do, DJ, because if you're sitting here and you're plugging something in here, smoke starts coming out of this, right? You almost burned a house in South Minneapolis because of the baseboard heaters. Can I tell you guys the story? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say it. Well, old, old baseboard heaters powered for an old lady. The house is powered with the, uh, with the uh, fuses. Walked in, changed all the fuses to circuit breakers, energized everything, not knowing that this board baseboard heater was completely covered by junk from the 50s. She covered the corner, it was in the corner, and the whole corner was covered with junk from the 50s. So when we start energizing it, you should, you should pay attention, the junk, the heater, the heater that wasn't working since the 50s, now it's working because you put in a circuit breaker, you create a fire, by the time you've got it, the fire department has to be there. <laughs> Smoke was completely engulfing the, the basement. <laughs> what? That's real. Why you that's why you have. Well, that's why you carry insurance. That's as a contractor why you carry insurance. The house was not total, but there was a lot of uh, damage, smoke damage, and the corner was burned. Oh. <laughs> okay, baseboard heaters. How many of you guys have wired baseboard heaters? Baseboard heaters. Baseboard heaters have two types of control. Spencer, my friend, you can either control them inline control. You're going to hear this word, my friend Jim, all the time inline control. Inline control, you use the high voltage to control. Okay? If it's not inline or line control, you use the line voltage to control. Otherwise, you have a transformer and you transform it down to a smaller voltage. In this case, do I, if, if you want to know if it's a line control, do I have a transformer here? So the voltage that you have, the 240 volt here, it's actually dumped right here, 240. So this controller is, is inline controller. All right, so here's how it works. You set your, uh, your th this is a thermostat, guys. You set your thermostat at the desired temperature, which is 95 for DJ. 
95, and then this heater keeps cooking until it reaches 95, it stops. There's a switch with it, opens. Opens both poles if it's two poles. Most baseboard heaters, guys, um, you can you can put up uh, you can put up to depending on the size. If you have another one, you get, you can wire them directly from here. Here's what's your limit on a baseboard. How many baseboard heaters? That question I get all the time. How many baseboard heaters you can put Chad on a 20 amp circuit? Your question, well, mostly two, but your answer for this question is you're going to take the 0.8, multiply it by 20 amp, multiply it by, if it's 240, by 240. This is max, maximum P that you can take out of a 20 amp circuit. So then you add the KW of all your water, your baseboard heater, and you should not ex exceed 0.8 times 20 times uh, 2. Uh, let's say 240 if it's 240 or 120 if it's 120. Most of the time, two. We, a lot of us guys, two. Typically, two. What is it? Three foot each. Baseboard heaters. You can put them in one thermostat, Spencer, or multiple thermostats. Up to you. Put the same thermostat or multiple thermostats. So that's as far as we're going to concern, guys, in terms of heaters. Any question about heaters? The other alternative, I have a picture of that. This is line thermostat. You can have a low voltage thermostat, guys, which you take the voltage here, transformer from here, transformer from here, and you put their thermostat right here. So the thermostat is controlled by 24 volts. There's a picture of that. Any question, my friends? Camille? No? Would you guys be able to walk in and wire that boy? You've seen him? What was it? Yes, sir. Mercury switches uh, as a the thermostat. Yeah. I think so. Is that what they use in that these yeah, little ones? Yeah. Usually. Yeah, they, with the with the thermostat. Well, no, they have a line one. I don't know if they came up with something different. I, I really don't know. I assume so. Well, Why are you worried about three uh, three legged uh, frogs like my wife? <laughs> or the two legged frogs? Um. I want to bring your attention, guys, to re-identifying the neutral. Look at that. Re-identifying, uh, not the neutral, the white to work as a hot. Is this okay by code? Re-identifying the conductor because now this is this is hot one and this is hot two. Can I re-identify the neutral in the in situation? Do I have to re-identify? Yes. If it's a cable, can I re-identify if it was a conduit? No. If it's a conduit, go pull another conductor different than white. If you, this is a cable, guys. Typical cable. This is uh, 12, uh, 12 2. I have a white and a black, but the black is hot. The white, I want to use the white as a hot. No problem if it's a cable. Re identify it as a black. Does that make sense? See that re identification here? Commonly used. Air conditioning, my friends. Air conditioning. Two things about air conditioning I want you guys to write. If it's an air conditioning, as an appliance is, if you have a dedicated circuit for it, 20 amp, then the equipment is limited to 80% of the 20 amp. If it's a plug-in, a plug-in air conditioning, this is AC, plug-in, AC, it's limited to 80% of at 20 amp. So that will get you what, 16 amps? That limited to, the size is limited to 16 amps. All right? If it's a plug-in, the same thing, AC, plug-in, except you're also taking from this circuit and you're feeding other things from the same circuit. Feeding receptacles, right? You can do that. Feed a receptacle here. Plug-in. If you're feeding a receptacle, then it's limited to 50%. Limited to 50%. What's 50% of a 20 amp? 10 amps. 10 amps. So if you have a plug-in receptacle sharing the circuit with other lights and receptacles, you're limited on a 20 amp to 10 amp. <laughs> if you have a plug-in air conditioning, dedicated circuit, just have enjoying this circuit by itself. Remember, these are all plugs. <coughs> these are plugs. There's a plug here. 
These are also plugs. There is a plug here. Then it's limited to 50. Can you guys write yourself these notes? That's on one of the tests. One of the tests. I know for a fact. If that will motivate you. So these guys are um, are the AC units. Um, for AC equipment, two things you have to bring to attention. For AC equipment, AC equipment guys have maximum over current protection and minimum circuit ambicity. These two values, you're going to live and die by these two values. These are right on the name plate. Name plate. Main plate, maximum over temperature device, minimum circuit ambicity. If maximum over temperature device is 50 amp, minimum circuit ambicity is 35 amp, just to give you an example, right on the name plate, then maximum over temperature device, then if it has to continue 50 amp, say fuse. Fuse, then it has to be 50 amp fuse. Spencer, can I use a circuit breaker if it says 50 amp fuse? No. Who am I to change the mind of the manufacturer? If the manufacturer on the name plate say, please use 50 amp fuse, you can't use 50 amp circuit breaker. If they say 50 amp fuse circuit breaker, your option. Okay? Now, 35, you're going to take the 35 to 310.16, and that will get your number 8 on the 60 degree column, number 8. Minimum circuit ambicity. No calculation. No calculation. You don't need to do any calculation. Any question guys of minimum? These are very important. Minimum circuit, maximum over current, and minimum circuit ambicity. If you don't have this, only if you don't have this, only if you don't have this information, if you don't have this information, then you go for conductor, conductor, you take 1.25 times rated load amp. They call it rated load amp. Or, and also for over current protection device, you take 2.25 times rated load amps. And you go down if it's not standard. If you don't believe Chad, you're going to go to Article 440 for this information. We did an example for these guys. You use the green only if you don't have the red and the blue. Most of these equipments, guys, they will tell you the maximum over competition device that they need and the time, as well as the minimum circuit ambicity. Do I need to multiply the 35 minimum circuit ambicity by anything? No, it's already done for you. Or what you have to do is just go to 310 to 16 and find the conductor. If you don't have the top info, then you apply the code. The code says to continuous load, 1.25 times rated load amps, and go find it. And 2.25, if it's not a standard, go to the bar, drink and cry, right? Custom design yourself a fuse, or go down. Huh? Copy, yeah, I know. I keep forgetting that we're working with alcohol, it's not on my screen. <laughs> what is that, what is that, the, uh, what is the floor? No. Is this one? Conductor. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be a star. Oh. Now it's a star. Over conductors and over temperature devices. Any question guys about these? Now these are the hardwired ones. The hardwired ones. And I would bring your attention guys, and we will do examples for that. There's also a disconnect, I need a disconnect. And believe it or not, the disconnect is like 1.15 times rated load amps. <laughs> rated load amps. What's a rated load amps? Full load amps. Fancy name. Rated load amps. Full load amps. Any question guys about this? So for uh, AC units, all what you have to do guys power wise is provide a disconnect. A fuse, power the equipment. How about the control? The control that comes with it, the two, the control, the thermostat. You bring two wires from here. I want to use it with which color? Black. So from where's my controller? Somewhere here. You bring it all the way to my thermostat. And that will be my two number 16 wires that's going to control this. 
thermostat that control the the AC. Most have you ever seen an AC without interference with the furnace? I've never seen an AC by itself. White hardwired AC without being interfaced with the furnace. The most common ones, guys, two units. Inside unit, you have the coils inside, the outside unit, and the interface, they have the blower inside with the coils, the evaporator outside with a fan, and they wire both units and they interface them with a class two circuit. Interface them with a class two circuit. Um, I want you guys to highlight this one. You need, for AC equipment, you need a receptacle within 25 feet of an NEH vac equipment, heating, cooling, or ventilation equipment. Heating, cooling, ventilation equipment. 20 amp circuit. This is my question for DJ. DJ, does that 20 amp, uh, uh, that receptacle, doesn't have to be 20 amp, it could be 15. Does that receptacle need to be in a dedicated circuit? Does the receptacle, guys, that feed these need to be in a dedicated circuit? Can I steal from the kitchen and feed it? No. Can I steal from the bathroom circuit and feed it? No. Can I steal from the basement circuit and feed it? No problem. Can I steal the power from the bedroom circuit, receptacle and feed it? No problem. It doesn't have to be a dedicated circuit. Is it affected because it's on arc also? So what? So they can plug in <coughs> motors like an arc pump and an arc pump? It's not supposed to. It could, but it's not supposed to. I want to bring one thing that's manufactured. I don't know if you've seen it when you go to the commercial. Smarter than Chad. What they do, guys, is they bring the power here to a fuse. And here's a neutral to the equipment. And you know what they do? They tap, they have a receptacle tied to it. And they tap hot. Anybody seen that? Neutral. To meet this for commercial projects, to meet the, this requirement, they right next to the disconnect, they tap from the line side of a disconnect and they have a receptacle right there. So what do you do? You go disconnect the equipment now. This is completely dead. Lock it, tag it, and you, you still have power to plug in and work on this machine. That's a cheap, cheaper way of um, of uh, of bringing a receptacle in a commercial building, rooftop units. Tab it. It says, but look what this is. It shall not be connected to the load side of equipment disconnect. Am I connected to the load side here? Where's the load side? This side is load. This side is line. Am I connected to the load side? No. I'm connected to the line side. It's okay. Can I connect that one to the load side? No. Why? Because if you de-energize the equipment, that your, your receptacle is dead. Is that what you want? No. Any question guys about the HVAC equipment? Any questions? HVAC equipment. The last thing guys about energy is the sear. What is it? Sear 13 right now? Sear and ear. Ear and sear. These are, I believe now, is sear 13. The higher the sear, the more, the more efficient the HVAC equipment is. I think there's sear 12, no longer use it. I think there's 14. I keep forgetting my know there's 13. So they, when they sell you an air conditioning, they say what sear you want, sear 13 or 14. The higher the sear, the more efficient the equipment, more money you pay. FYI. So when it comes to the HVAC equipment, there's a lot of guys um, of rules and regulations you have to adhere to, which doesn't affect us directly as electrical engineers. The mechanical engineers have to deal with these to meet their energy code, to meet their energy code. For us, it's FYI. When you do load, there's a non-simultaneous leak. Do you guys remember? You are doing the load right now. These are 2.8.60 series non-simultaneously used equipment. Means equipment are not used at the same time, heat cool. What does 
then you pick the largest. You need to pick the largest of both. The largest, non coincident the load. Because remember that, you're doing it for us. non coincident the load. So you have two pumps, a heater and a HVAC. I choose the largest of the two. That's all what I have, guys. Let me just see if I have a couple of pictures to share with you. And then I'll let you go eat. I know you're hungry. And nothing worse than you know getting between a man and his food or a woman not on diet though okay here's a just a couple of pictures guys this is not line thermostat this is low voltage thermostat how do i know because i took the voltage of that they took the voltage to a 24 they took the voltage uh, i need the relay they took it to 24 volt is 120 24 volt when this is closed, this relay will push these to close. Now my heater will work. So this is just low voltage thermostat. Low voltage. Low voltage. What's the alternative is to get rid of everything here and just put line thermostat. Low voltage thermostat wiring. Baseboard heaters. Here's a line thermostat. You can feed two. How many can I feed? I can feed as many as, as long as, in this case, 240. If it's 240, it's my limit. 240. 240 times 20 amps. Cut them by what? 20. That's how the limit on how many I can feed from a 20 amp circuit. Then, then if that was, say, 3K, and that was 4K, add 3 plus 4. I'll give you 7K. It's more than probably the limitation of that. Anybody care? What's the math on that one? Can anybody calculate that math? Please. What's the math? Times two times 20. 20, yep. Two times 38, 40. Divide, divide by uh, 38, 3.8, 4K, VA, right? 2.8. Now, can I put these two then? One three is one four. Can I put them on this circuit? No, I can't. So let's take an example that works. One point five k and another one point five k. Is that okay? Three. Am I within the limit? Three point eight. Yep. No problem, Chad. Do it. Do I have to worry about the inrush for these, like motors? No. What if one was longer than the other? Does it matter if you're doing them parallel? No. Longer, what What do you mean, physically? One, six foot, one, six. Does, it, does it matter? Electricity doesn't matter. As long as the same, uh, they meet the requirement. They're all on or they're off? Yes, if you want to control them the same. When, we, when it comes to feeding, let's go back to that one. When it comes to feeding them, so this could be a, like a three-footer. A three Three and this could be six, no problem. Except most likely, say that was a one k, and that was a two k. Now I have three k. I did not exceed the three point eight. I'm good to go. Do I want to control it from one thermostat? It's up to you. You know, the more thermostat, the more control you can have. You can have this corner very hot and this corner cold, and you know what I mean. More thermostat is better control and more money. Okay. Just the last thing, guys, I want to talk about before I let you go, and I promise this time not talk about this one, talk about this one. Yeah, number one is um, air conditioning, especially air conditioning. If they tell you guys they need a fuse, if they tell you they need a fuse, then you have to provide a fuse. If the if they if for air conditioning they have uh, either fuse. Or hacker, hacker, heating, air conditioning, rated receptacle. If they told you they need a fuse, then you have to provide a fuse. If they told you you need a, a hacker receptacle, you have to uh, uh, circuit breaker has to be a hacker. If they told you either, you can provide either. So in this case, I can. If you guys go to your book, it's there's built in a really nice way. A couple of scenarios that I would like to 
If you look, guys, in page 467, will you? This says, um, air conditioning nameplate reads maximum size fuse 40 amps, non-fuse disconnect, and a 40 amp circuit breaker. Can you guys see this? Does that meet the code? The nameplate said they need 40 amp fuse, and, and, and Brad went single-handedly and had a, a non-fuse disconnect, no fuse in it, and a circuit, a 40 amp circuit breaker. So here's the 40 amp circuit breaker here. And uh, no fuse, no fuse. And the nameplate says they need a fuse. Is that okay? No. How do you make this fine? You have to go and put a, a fuse here that's, uh, what is it, 40 amp. Now we're cool. Okay, so if they see it, they want a fuse, guys. They know their equipment. Their equipment works better with a fuse. They say they want a fuse, provide a fuse for them. So that's scenario one. There's a couple of other scenarios. Um, I think we have them. That's what we got. The other scenario is the other scenario it says maximum size fuse 40 amps, and I provided a 40 amp fuse and a 40 amp circuit breaker. So here's a 40 amp, this one, they want a 40 amp fuse, and I provided them with a 40 amp fuse, and I still have to provide a 40 amp circuit breaker. Is this okay? 40 amp circuit breaker for the feeder, and 40 amp fuse for the equipment, no problem. And I have my disconnect, that's cool. And the last scenario, these are a couple of scenarios at the end of the book, how to put the fuse with circuit breakers. The last scenario is not here. Let's go back when they tell you if they say um, um, fuse or circuit breaker. So if this is says fuse, this is fuse or circuit breaker, then my option, either I use 40 amp, 40 amp, then if I put 40 amp here, do I need a fuse here? I need a disconnect, but do I need a fuse? No. Most of them, guys, in this scenario, most of them, they tell you fuse or circuit breaker, so you put the fuse in the pan, uh, the circuit breaker in the panel. This circuit breaker has to be hacker. Hacker. A lot of circuit breakers are rated for hacker means heating, air conditioning, rated. It rated, this circuit breaker rated to work with them, no problem. 40 amp, do I need a fuse here or disconnect? No. Why? Because it says either or. Use either one of them. So it's cheaper. The key point, guys, always look at the, the, or the manufacturer want you if they want a fuse you provide a fuse if they want a circuit breaker you provide circuit breaker if you you say fuse or circuit breaker then your choice so you're saying that you have to use a special fuse in the panel not a fuse not a special fuse breaker, I mean. yes a hacker fuse uh, breaker which is most of the breakers that you can see that they, they, they see hacker on them. Oh, they do? They do. Yeah. If you look at the 240, 30 amp, they see hacker on them. Oh, okay. It means they're rated to work on the 40 amps. Okay. Hey, Mr. Raymond. That's what you want. Do you want something, say something to lose your right. yeah, hunger? Right. Vote for the Ohm's Law pumpkin down in the cafeteria. <laughs> Ohm's Law pumpkin. Every electrical student should vote for the Ohm's Law pumpkin. It might not be the best one, but, but, but brother the support. The brother support. Well, I'm not sure carving is the right word, but I did enter in the Ohm's Law pumpkin. <laughs> okay. Kind of representative of uh, electrical thoughts. And is it got a candle or a light in it? Uh, I'm not going to open myself up to interrogation at this point. <laughs> <laughs> a heater, maybe. <laughs> we just talk about heater. Yeah. But you all know that there are 12 Ohm's Law equations, right? <clears throat> and all 12 of those equations are represented on that pumpkin. What are the 13? That's only... Uh, every four years, on the, you know, when we have stick day or, or the leap year. leap year, leap years. So, with that thought, when you go through the line, make sure you vote for the Ohm's Law pumpkin. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to go to lunch. Now, I, I promise. One thing, guys, and I will go this over this in details. There is a AC equipment, and I promise we're going to get to this in detail, guys, in the commercial. AC equipment has two parts. It has the outside part, the outside part, the inside part, connected with the refrigerant, goes between the two. Power circuit for the outside unit, power circuit for the inside unit, and a control circuit in between, and go to lunch. I promise this is to be continued when we go to the commercial. I'll wait now. I don't want it to be mad at me. Sure, it's good.
you know what article that says that you have to have an individual brain search in a baseball field? Well, 240. Brand circuits. Uh, disconnect means location installation. Uh, brand circuit fixed electric space will shall be considered continuous load. That's the only thing I can see. It's page uh, two hundred eighty-four. What brand uh, two hundred eighty-four? Two eighty-four. Two eighty-four. Brand circuit requirement. Individual brand circuit shall be permitted. Permitted. To supply any size fixed electric permitted, not required, shall be permitted to supply any size fixed electric space heater. Branch circuit supplying two or more outlets for fixed electric space heater equipment shall be rated 15, 20, 25. In non dwelling occupancies, fixed infrared heating equipment shall be permitted to be supplied from a branch circuit rated 50 amps. Shall be permitted to have an individual circuit. Does it say shall be required? Is it smart to put it in a smart circuit? Yes. We have big load. Why would you share it with a receptacle circuit? Because you don't have room. Well, I just did that cabin and, and I uh, ended up having to put the outlets in there because I didn't want to cut them into the floor, you know? Okay. And I pulled individuals and I was like hoping that I'd be able to even go to like one on each side. But they wouldn't even let me pull the wire for the, the manufacturer. You have to pull one each side. And then I also had 240 running the baseboard heater. So, so I would have to have four circuits if I wanted to have two receptacles on the 240. Or you, you can know? you can power the two receptacles separately from... Yeah, they, 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 they won't let you run the wire. Yeah, yeah, you can't use them as a conduit. They're not ready for conduit. Right, yeah, so They're ready to feed like, one receptacle like, in and out. Why can't you buy... Uh, wire that's rated for that. Then they said, well, but it's not UL proof, man. It's in there, yeah, or yeah. whatever, man. I was like, it was already roughed in, and, you know. But, yeah. uh, so I only ended up being able to put one. So using a, a baseboard heater to pull your wires to go to another receptacle in a baseboard heater. Yeah. Yeah. No, can't do that. Unless the equipment is listed as a raceway. Right. And They're not a raceway. No, even though they can pull their wires. The dedicated wires for them, but they don't pull the wires though. They pull the wires for the equipment. They don't use it to go from one to another. What they do for base, see how his baseboard heater one, his two, they come from J box to J box and out. They don't go this way from here and and here. No, you don't do that. What you mean? What you mean? What, what, what? You're running in series? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, not in series. Here's one, here's another. I want to wire these two. Yeah. I'll bring the circuit here. Yeah. Have 20 amp circuit. Yeah. Then move through it out to here. Do you do that? No. No. You, you can. You're not supposed to. No, you can't. Yeah. Can. They're not series. They're not series. They're just moving through. Everything is in parallel. The coil is here. Here's the coil. Yeah. So here's one side of the coil, the other side of the coil. Yeah. Then. I brought from here, tapped it, and went into this coil, and from here went into this coil. Can you do that? Move through the baseboard here? No. You need to go out. Oh, right, yeah. And in. Yeah. Out and in. You can't go through the equipment. It's a raceway. Is that your food? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> I'm eating breakfast. Yeah, these, uh, look what we get. I, I'm doing breakfast at 10.30 and eating fruit in the morning. We're oh. doing my breakfast. Oh, I brought fruit. I needed to. Oh, you guys. I'm going to go eat. What is all that? It's all leaking. Whatever it is, it'll be good. It will. It's all